What's up guys and welcome back to another eBay Miniature Rescues Learn, Paint, Fail, and Repeat. Today we're going to be working on Mukali Raiders from Forge World. They're resin models and they come on very large pieces of resin and it takes a minute to start cleaning that stuff up. So we're going to go through the process a little bit. I'm going to show you how I clean these up and then we're going to take them outside and give them a spray. So the first thing that I did with these models is I separated everything out for each of them. So I cut everything off of the sprues and got everything cleaned under, you know, warm water and dish soap. And what that does is it cleans the model from all of the mold release and sometimes there's little bits of silicone kind of stuck in the corners. Then what I did is I took some sanding files and I pretty much spent a good hour with each model filing down any kind of mold line or stray piece of resin. Something to remember when you're sanding or filing down resin is that the actual dust can be toxic. So you need to do it in an open area, outside, away from pets, children, and with a mask on, preferably. Once everything was cleaned off, I decided to drill out the feet that were touching the base and pin the models down to the plastic. That way, if you ever wanted to remove them, you could. Just a little bit of super glue, you know, it goes a long way. But these are pretty heavy models for being resin, so I wanted to make sure that once they were on the base, they were stuck on the base. A nice convenience with pinning models is that you can also separate them out into sub-assemblies and, you know, stick the pins into cork. So you can have them separated and, you know, you don't have to touch them and you can still paint them. In this case, everything is pretty easy to reach while these models are attached to their bases. So I went ahead and locked everything in before, you know, getting down on some paint. These are just super awesome looking models. The details on these Forge World models are really sharp and really striking. Everything stands out really nicely. And it's pretty nice to see that, you know, even a Forge World model can go together fairly nicely. But of course, there are always going to be small gaps. So we're using Vallejo's plastic putty, and we're just going to put that into any of the larger gaps and then using water on the end of the same brush, feather that out onto the rest. You're not gonna see that after it's primed, but those gaps are gonna be nice and filled. After all the gaps are filled, I'm gonna take the models outside and I'm gonna give them a quick spray, pretty thin, of testers matte medium. And I'm gonna do this before the primer because I've heard and been told that, you know, this resin can soak paint in. It's got pores in it sometimes. And I don't know how true that is, but just to be safe, I wanted to give it a quick spray just to lock everything in so we don't have any issues after the primer. Vallejo Surface Primer Skeleton Bone is going to be a really good start to a lot of the tones that we're going to try and go for with these Mukali Raiders. I should also mention that these models were sent in by Micah R. He has an existing Raiders army, and he wanted me to paint these to match. So I'm going to try and keep everything kind of a muted khaki tone, use a little bit of blues and reds because he has some kind of variation in a few different troop choices and I'm gonna try and tie this together with what he already has going on. One of my favorite things to do for large animals or weird creatures is to give a more natural looking kind of skin variation. 
So we're gonna grab some of this moss from this moss collection that I found at a local hobby store. And we're gonna use Incubi Darkness fairly lightly and spray that through the moss in order to get a more natural looking skin tone for these naked space camels. As you can see, it doesn't take much with this technique to get a really interesting looking skin over an animal. And it's pretty natural as far as, you know, what you would find in nature. A lot of animals have that kind of, you know, underbellies and different skin tones all over their body. And I'm going to do this on the rest of them. And the other really nice thing about doing this is that it's really random, even with the same piece of moss you know, because you're not shooting in the same spot every time. And it's going to give all of them a pretty unique look, but still be unifying with that color. I'm also going to shoot a lot of this Incubi Darkness on the skin, especially on the shoulders and the knees, that kind of thing, just to kind of tie it all together to make it look like it's actually covering his entire top instead of just kind of being spotty around his limbs. With Vallejo's khaki, I'm going to take care of all of their uniforms. Bringing in corn red, I'm going to paint the seat cover that he's sitting on. Rhinox hide as a base coat for anything made of leather. This is going to include the boots, any leather pouches, uh, he's got kind of these leather gauntlets on that are covered in a little bit of metal, but for the most part there's a ton of leather all over these models. In thinking about how I wanted to paint these, you know, I'm trying to match an army that already exists, but I wanted to try and incorporate a little bit of, I don't want to say the story of these models, but kind of the idea behind them. You know, they've gotten these animals that are slow moving and, you know, they're just trying to march into battle essentially with kind of what they have. So I figured anything on them should kind of be unified as well. So all the leather is kind of the same. All the cloth is kind of the same. And that goes for metallics too. We're going to use this Vallejo metal color dark aluminum and take care of all of the metallics. And what I figured is that, you know, whatever they had on hand to make these parts or wherever they got them, they're all going to be pretty much the same kind of metal as well. I'm going to start with a base coat of Grey Seer for all of the cloth that they've got wrapped around their heads. In Micah's army that I'm trying to match, he had several different kinds of head wraps. Some of them were red, some of them were kind of this white with bluish tints to that. And since I wanted to use a little bit of both, I decided that the head wraps would be, you know, white with some blue shadows and that cloth that they're sitting on was going to be the red. It also occurred to me that if you're riding across vast lands of desert, 
that you'd probably want a white head wrap that's going to keep you a little bit more cool. Using Xandri dust, I'm going to paint the blanket over the back of this Mukali. It's a little bit different than the khaki from Vallejo. It's a little bit darker. So I wanted to just kind of start it off in a little bit more dirtier fashion. So, you know, they throw everything onto these animals just right up on the backs. And so all the dust collects there and they're just dirty. And their uniforms, because they're moving around a lot more, have some of that dust knocked away. And it's not a huge difference. It's pretty much the same material, air quotes. But, you know, it's going to give a little bit more uh, variation in color overall to these models. Now I'm going to do an all over shade of, you know, the rider and all the stuff on the back of the Macaulay in Agrax Earthshade. And that's kind of doing the same thing. It's going to give the dirt air quotes again, all of that same kind of unifying look. A one-to-one -one mixture of contrast Space Wolves Gray and contrast Medium, I'm going to take care of all of the head wraps. This is going to put just a little bit of blue into the shadows of these white head wraps. And because the way contrast works, all of that color is going to settle in the recesses and really leave a lot of those high points showing. So immediately we're getting kind of a free highlight and not that we're not going to go back and continue to bring up that white, but it's a good place to start and it's a little bit better than, you know, a Drakenhof nightshade. Using Reichlin Flesh Shade, I'm going to go over all the skin on this Macaulay. And I'm going to focus this more on that Skeleton Bone Primer, because it's already kind of a nice deserty color, and we're going to put a little more skin tone into that. Then we're going to come back with some Drakenhof Nightshade, and kind of from the top down where that Incubi Darkness is, try and mix that together. So you want to do this fairly quickly so that the washes don't dry and you're left with some pretty harsh lines where those two colors meet. So here's that Drakenhof Nightshade that I was just talking about. I'm just going to go over this really quick from the top down and try and mix those washes together. That way, like I said, there aren't any harsh lines and we're kind of just bringing out that blue of that Incubi Darkness just a little bit more. Using Xandri Dust, I'm going to start to sketch in a lot of the highlights on these blankets. Now, the way I like to do this is to kind of broadly bring back that color that we originally used. So in this case, Xandri Dust. And I'm just going to go over each of the highlights to make sure that that's exactly where they need to be. And then we're going to start to add a little bit more, you know, damage to the leather, a little bit of scratching kind of start to striate lines just a little bit away from those bigger highlights and not quite layer the entire thing, but just make it look like it's a really dirty piece of cloth that has a lot of wear and tear to it. Especially recently, I've been trying to really push myself into, you know, kind of new territories when it comes to painting. And for the leather, I wanted to try this kind of new technique out. Now, normally, I start with Rhinox Hide and come in with Mornfang Brown as a highlight, and I'm, I'm doing that here as well. But what I'm trying to do is, again, like I said with the cloth earlier, is broadly highlight. So we want to lay the color in over most of that, layering it up, right, kind of traditionally. But then as we start to introduce more colors, then we're going to start to tighten that up a little bit and start to add texture into this leather. So with Kislev Flesh on a wet palette, I'm going to start to create different mixes of this brown. And I'm going to go a little bit higher from that Mornfang Brown with each go and kind of start to 
scratch that leather up just a little bit. So at this point, we're pretty much at a pure Kislev flesh. There's just a little bit of brown still left in the brush. You know, I haven't really been cleaning it out that much because uh, I'm trying to work pretty fast with this, you know. There's a little bit of wet blending and, you know, layering and glazing just kind of all, you know, in the same go to try and mix all these colors together and make them look as natural as I can. But with this Kislev flesh, I'm going to stipple on and kind of edge highlight a lot of the sharper edges and I'm going to try to introduce, you know, little scratches here and there to reinforce the color that was underneath and make it look like cracked old leather. I'm also going to use the same process because I really did like the way that it came out. I was pretty happy about that. I'm going to go on to all of the boots and all of the other leather and pretty much replicate that to, again, make it consistent across the board as far as these leathers. Now with Corax White, I'm going to start to highlight the head wraps, leaving as much blue as I can in the recesses. With khaki and white, which is really more of an off-white, I'm going to start to blend those together to create brighter and brighter highlights for the uniforms. So we're going to start with khaki, you know, and kind of layer those highlights on. And then on the wet palette, start to slowly introduce that white and just get brighter toward kind of the higher points. Using Kislev Flesh, we're going to start to introduce a lot more texture and depth into these animals. Now, we don't want to wipe out any of the blue or the transitions between the blue and the skin tone. So I'm not going to dry brush any of this. The texture on these animals is really great, and it's definitely something that you can dry brush, and it would look really good. But because I've mixed these two colors, I want to really go in and focus on a lot of these higher points and start to make texture on these animals. This step was by far my favorite part of painting these models. And a lot of that is because I felt like, you know, the skin was more of a canvas and I was able to really go in there and make things look exactly the way that I wanted them to. 
you know, pick out certain details or add little bits of imperfections, you know, and brighten things up. And it just made everything kind of come alive and really tie that blue and skin tone together. The nice thing about doing five of these all together is that I was able to really get in on each of these animals and kind of differentiate them in different ways. So I added a lot of this Kislev flesh, you know, in kind of this little pattern all over each of their bodies. So they're all unified. They have, uh, you know, the same colors going on, but then they have these little markings all over. And I thought that was really cool. I don't know why it just really stood out to me. With Vallejo's aluminum, we're going to come in and highlight all of the metallic parts. Some of this stuff I'm just going to kind of layer over the top and, you know, leave some of that shadow showing. And in other areas, I'm going to dry brush over some of that smaller detail, you know, so there's darker metal and the wash still in the recesses. And that's really going to brighten all of this metal up and really make it stand out. Something I really like about these Vallejo metal colors, as I've been using them, you know, over probably the last few weeks, is that they look way more realistic than pretty much any other metallic paint that I've used. They just have that kind of consistency to them. They're shinier than most other metals. I haven't done any in-depth testing. Um, I have noticed that the aluminum looks almost identical to the airbrush aluminum from just the regular Vallejo paint line. So I guess what I'm really looking for, you know, into really playing with these colors a lot more is, are these the kind of colors that you're always going to use? Or there are there still metallics, you know, from the regular metallics line, either GW or Vallejo or whatever, that are better in certain applications? Now, obviously color choice comes into play a lot of the time and the metal color line is fairly limited but does that matter if the metal color always works better than any other metallic would you just opt for metal color or would you prefer color let me know in the comments so normally i don't show basing on this channel and that's usually because it's just kind of the last thing before revealing the model. And it's usually not so important because it's non-specific to pretty much anybody watching. 
in this case, I'm trying to replicate bases that already exist. So what I'm doing is laying down some PVA. I've got a pretty fine sand, you know, kind of a medium ballasty sand and some larger rocks. And then I'm bringing in this even finer sand and pushing this all together. The nice thing about doing bases like this is it's fairly quick. They look pretty good and you're not really getting any gaps in that glue. Now PVA can shrink, so you kind of have to watch out for that. But if you've got that kind of large rock, medium rock, and then really fine stuff, then you're going to fill in those gaps and you're going to come out with a pretty nice base on the other side. I'm also taking some army painter grass tufts and I'm just kind of placing them where they seem like they would fit. You know, if they're going to be walking near them or over them, some of these Mukali have their feet raised. So I'm trying to make it look like they're stepping over that stuff. So they're just kind of wandering through the desert. I should also mention that after everything was all said and done, I did a couple of coats of varnish and that really locked all of this stuff in. Now on some other channels, I've seen people use, you know, really watered down glues to do that, but I've never had a problem just using varnish. Now I'm not dry brushing this or painting over it, so that's probably why, but in general, whenever I've done bases like this, they've lasted for a really long time. And before we wrap this up and get to the reveal, I just want to say thank you to Micah for allowing me to paint these Mukali Raiders, Rough Riders. These are fantastic models. And for as much work as Forge World can be, when you get on the other end of that and you've painted it, it really looks pretty nice. I mean, you can see everything on these models. The detail is pretty astounding. So thank you. Thank you once again for joining me on another eBay Miniature Rescues Learn, Paint, Fail, and Repeat. You know about that name. I'm going to change it a little bit. We're going we're gonna to change it. It's going to be the same thing, but it's going to be Paint, Fail, Learn, Repeat. We're, we'll get to that. It'll be great. Anyways, if you like something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps the channel out. If you would like to support this channel in a different way, I have a merch shelf just below this video. I've got t-shirts, mugs, and stickers. Right now, the design that's on that merch shelf is, you know, not unlike an Orktober theme. It is an Ork-themed shirt. And I personally really, really enjoy that design. So check it out. And thank you to everyone who has purchased something from there so far. It's really right now the main driving income that I have as far as keeping this channel going, getting new models, things like that. It is also extremely helpful in helping me to save for some new camera equipment. I've been using my iPhone for the last year since this channel started. And while I've gotten a new iPhone, you know, in the middle of that, I broke one, got a new one. I definitely want to improve the quality of these videos and really keep them going in the same fashion that I have. So again, thank you. If you would like to follow along and paint to one of these specific paint, learn, fail and repeat videos, the next one I plan on doing is going to be the Lord of the Rings Riders of Rohan five horse little box so stay tuned for that subscribe and you know come hang out and paint and once again i've been casey and i will see you in the next video